Hey friends, I'm so glad you are here with me today. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're diving into the last truth in our 10 truths to trust. This has been an amazing adventure and really challenging, honestly. Let's even talk about uh, between ourselves, even myself. Some of these truths that we've been talking about, I'm starting to realize I'm not putting action to it which means I don't really believe it. And that's why we're going through these 10 truths because action is the only common sense reaction to something you really trust. If you really trust something, if you really trust someone, then action is going to be the automatic byproduct of that trust. And so we've been diving into 10 truths. This is number 10. If you haven't uh, grown with us through the previous nine, you got to check them out, especially yesterday. Really, all of the truths that we've talked about, hang on what we're going to talk about today and what we talked about yesterday. So if you're like, I don't have that time to listen to and catch up on all of these, you know, make time for what you trust is valuable. And if you don't think it will, at least listen to part nine. But I promise you, they're so good. They're all valuable. They're so, so good because they're based on what the word says. For the most part, what we try to do at root is get rid of all of the emotion, all of the opinion, all of the, the extras that people add into discovering what the Bible says. And we just go focus on what the Bible says. We want you to be rooted in the word and ignited by the spirit. And when you are that, you cannot imagine what God will do th through you if you trust him to. It's a little bit of what we talked about yesterday. So today, our final truth. Okay, that's kind of silly, but I'm excited about it. Final truth is you are created for works. I know some of you are triggering, oh man, we're created for works. No, it's not all about works, it's about relationship. Oh, we can't use that W word, that's like a four letter word in the church, ah, right? Some of, you, some of you are feeling that kickback already, you're ready to like, okay, scroll to the next video. Don't do it, listen to this. We're going to dive into it. I got a whole lot of scriptures we're going to look at before we get there. But it it starts with this. One of my key verses that we use all the time, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ and it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. It's no longer you who live. If you have really given control of your life to him, then your life should be under his control. You don't have the option to your own choices of this is what I feel like doing, this is what I feel like watching, this is what I feel like saying, these are the opinions of my friends, and so I'm going to take that on. We don't have the right to any of that. It's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives within me. 2 Corinthians 5.17 backs that up. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. We have been made brand new in him. Sorry, I got something in my eye. I can't figure out what it is. We've been made brand new in him. The old us gone. The old way of thinking, gone. We don't have a right to that. Yes, does it try to sneak in? Yeah. Does the enemy try to give us thoughts about this? You know, we used to do this. This was so fun back in the day. We used to have a value for this. We haven't done that in so long. You know, it's not going to hurt to just go back and uh, relive that a little bit. Start watching that show again. Start doing those kind of activities. Right? I'm not talking about sin. I'm talking about the things that hinder, the things that take us away from 
God's ultimate plan for our life. There's so many good things that we can get uh, tied up into that are good things. But if they're outside of God's plan, then you're missing the entire boat. You're missing the abundant life God has for you. You're missing strength, his wisdom, his righteousness, his, his everything in that because anything that's outside of his plan, he was not going to empower. He empowers his plan. He does not empower your plan if it's apart from his. Because now we are children of God, like John 1, 12 says, But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Isn't that interesting? He gave us the right to become children of God. He doesn't force us into it. Even after salvation, we can still live like a child of the devil in a lot of areas. Is that going to hinder us from living his abundant life? Yeah, it's going to be ridiculous. You'll live an unsaved reality of, of horrible things happening in your life because you're not living in his Hang on. Am I still live? I'm recording it, so if I'm not live, I'll uh, keep going. All right. So, and those things that we did before we became children of God or things that we've done even as children of God where we didn't know, we were ignorant, or even the things we knew we probably shouldn't say, we probably shouldn't have done. We did it. If we have repented, if we have burned those bridges, so to speak, so that we're not going to do that again. And Romans 8, 1 is true for you. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. There's no condemnation for what you haven't done in or chose to do in the past. Don't let that hinder you at all. But let's not let our past failures, past misopportunities, control his future that he has for us to walk in. That'd be ridiculous. We can't do that. No, instead, we have to release to him. Realize that, and like the first verse we've talked about, Galatians 2.20, it's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives within me. Or Romans chapter 6, verse 3 and 4. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that, well, so, much, so many times we stop there. Yeah, we've been baptized into him into death. And then we expect death. We expect death to reign in our life. Oh, you know, yep, now the devil's after me because I've been baptized into Christ. And so now he's going to bring death and sickness and try to steal and kill and destroy all the time. And that's how my life is going to be marked by, by constant fights and skirmishes, skirmishes with the enemy. And we got to finish that sentence. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism to death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we might too walk in the newness of life. We're supposed to be walking in a newness of life. What would that look like? A newness of life would not look like the same life that every unsaved person is living. That would be the same life. That'd be the old life. What would newness of life 
look like? How could we understand what that newness of life is that he wants us to enjoy, that he wants to uh, flow through us to create? Colossians 1, or sorry, Colossians 3 uh, makes it real plain. It starts this way. Therefore, if you have been raised up with Christ, just like that last verse said, we're raised from dead by the glory, of, sorry, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Colossians 3 gives us further insight. Therefore, if you've been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. That's what should be our focus. That's where we should be. Um, How do I say it? That, that's where all of our attention needs to be going. That's where all of our focus needs to be going. That's where all of our energy should be going. I'm seeking the things above. What does that look like? I'm just going to pray all day, 18 hours in my Bible and prayer reading. No. No, <laughs> that's not it. Because the things that are from above... Well, we'll get our mind. We'll get there. Verse two, set your mind on things above, not on the things that are on the earth. Verse three, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Galatians 3, 27, for all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. So how will we reveal him in glory? Will it be because we are sitting at home, reading our Bibles, praying, worshiping in our living rooms, uh, and, and doing all these kind of things? Will we be revealing him in his glory? Who or how could we reveal him in his glory if no one is around to see his glory? So it's talking about something more, something deeper, something, a connection with him in other parts of your life that go beyond your Bible study and worship and praying. Am I saying where once you grow to a certain point in your relationship with God, those things fall to the wayside? No, that is the opposite of what I'm saying. I'm saying those things empower the rest of your life. Instead of those become side additions or extra to-do things or extra things on your to-do list, now they become your source of life that you take with you into all things so that, so that uh, you may actually live his life. For we are, Ephesians 2.10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. He made us in Christ to be like him in this world. How could we represent him well if our life looked nothing like Jesus's? How could we represent him well if we're just trying our best to be a little bit better than the unsaved people around us? Then they're going to look at us and say, wow, they're a really good person. That's so wrong. Is that bringing glory to God? By somebody saying, oh, wow, they're a good person. They're a little bit nicer than I am. No, it's why it's why we have to keep our minds set on things above, on heavenly things. Set our hearts on heavenly things that only supernatural revelations, miracles, wisdom, actions are part of who are or part of our everyday life, so that when people look at us, they see his glory so much bigger than ourselves so much more powerful than anything we could ever accomplish in our own wisdom so let me uh, sorry I, I jumped in here Ephesians 2:10 for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them so now you're like wait so if I'm keeping my head and mind or my heart and my mind set on things above. And now you're telling me I got all these good works I have to do. And th this is the expectation. How, how am, 
Am I supposed to do both? That doesn't, that doesn't work. Yeah, it does. It totally does. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For as by grace you've been saved through faith, and this not of your own doing. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. Now, some of you are saying, wait a sec. You just said we were created for works, and now this one says it's not a result of works. You're right. Our salvation was not a result of our own works. It was his transforming power working in us that created that new reality that we could never create in our own. And then from that point on, we don't continue to try on our own to accomplish things that were begun in the spirit. That's what Galatians 3, verse 3, 4, and 5 say. Are you so foolish having begun by the spirit? Are you now being perfected by the flesh? Did you suffer so many things in vain, if indeed it was vain? So then, does he who provides you with the Spirit and work miracles among you do it by the works of the law or by hearing with faith? It is by us hearing what he wants to do, relinquishing control, not my will but yours be done, and then allowing that faith, that trust, in this is what God is speaking to me, propel me into his plans, propel me into actions based on his plans. How else would it be? It's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives within me. If our actions don't represent Christ, if his, if our actions aren't Christ like, think about Christ, uh, uh, how he lived feeding of the thousands, right? I don't remember if this is from the 5,000 or the 4,000. He asked the disciples, or tells, hey, we should feed these guys, right? And twice the disciples come up with natural actions that could be done to solve this issue. And Jesus almost gets disgusted with them. He's like, what's wrong with you? You got to believe bigger. How could the God of exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think be glorified if our actions aren't exceedingly abundantly above all anyone else could ask or think? Oh my word, how did you just do that? That's crazy. How, no one can do those kind of things. That's not even human. Now you're on the right path. You're like, wait, wait, we can't live that existence. That's what Jesus lived. Well, guess what? Like we talked about yesterday. Uh, actually, it was in my my face-to-face -face, uh, lesson where I was teaching at a local church here that, that Jesus lived as our example. If he lived as our example and showed how awesome God is and all his actions were because he was God and it, so everybody could be impressed with God. And then he said, okay, now, this is the example to follow and you do the same thing. Be impossible. In ourselves, there's no way we could do that. I can't raise people from the dead. I can't feed 5,000 from a couple snacks from my cabinet on my own. I can't walk on water. I can't, I can't, I can't. But in Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, just like he lived, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's not talking about I can do all the things that I want to do and not get tired of doing my things because his strength is empowering my plans. No, and it's opposite. When he drops an idea of something in your head that you're like, are you kidding me? You want me to do that right now? I don't have time for that. I don't even know how I could do that. That's just... That's so far beyond anything that I was planning for my day. That's, that's way outside of my plan. He drops the idea. And when we step into obedience and do the things that he's showing us to do, all of a sudden, it's his power that's accomplishing his idea, his plan. And then his power accomplishing his plan brings about his supernatural outcome. So it's a supernatural plan with a supernatural power 
providing a supernatural outcome through you. We are simply conduits. That's why it's not by our own works, but we were created for his works in Christ Jesus, that we should trust him enough that our actions reflect him. That's why James 2, 26, for just as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. Do you really trust him to be who he is in you? Then the natural outcome, the common sense reaction to that truth is going to be us stepping out, us putting action to the things that we believe. We believe he's going to be exceedingly abundantly through us. We're going to take action. We're going to step out when he provides an exceedingly abundantly idea, something that we should think, something that we should do, something that we should say. And you're like, in your head, you may have that argument. I don't know if I can do that. Who's ever been there? I've totally been there. I don't know if I can do that right now. This would be awkward if I tried best time. Best time to take action is when there's no possible positive in the natural, in your own ability for a great outcome. It's true. And your head will tell you there's no possible great react or outcome of this action in your own power. I don't think this is a good idea. What if you missed it? It's going to look bad. What if you didn't miss it? What if you were doing exactly what God wanted you to do? Let's trust him to be the God of exceedingly, abundantly, above all we ask or think, according to the power at work within us. You've already received everything you need for life and godliness. That's what 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 says. You've already received it. What is it? It's not that you're amazing. It's that he's amazing in you. It's not that you have everything in yourself and so, yep, I'm just going to power through. I'm going to make this happen. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So here's my plan. I'm going to conquer this. I'm going to achieve this. I'm going to power through and make this happen. No. That's a lot of hard work. That's a lot of effort going in without his empowerment. And then it makes it really tough to say, yeah, that's true. Jesus said his burden, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. That's why I'm powering through. I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to Does that look like yoke is easy, burden is light? No. When does it become yoke is easy, burden is light? And when we finally relax, we relent enough to say, okay, Not my will, but yours be done. You say to do this, I'm stepping out and I'm going to trust you for the outcome. I'm just going to be obedient. You say to say this, I can't figure out what that would do, how that would benefit me or that person if I start down that road and say that. But you know what? If you're saying it, I'm going for it. If you miss it, guess what? We all have missed it. Apologize. Move and keep moving forward. You don't let those things where, oh man, I was trying to step out and follow God and I said what he said and it just didn't work out. Guess what? You're responsible to try to be as obedient as you can. So even in missing it and stepping out and trying to be obedient, you're trying to be obedient. There's reward in that. He's responsible for the outcome. And so if it's not the outcome that you really dreamt up in your head, oh man, if I do this, then God has to do this and has to do this. And it's going to be amazing. And then it's going to be, he's going to be glorified and I'm going to be glorified with him, which actually the word says will happen when we let his outcomes be acceptable to us. And not to get disheartened or disillusioned or discouraged when his outcomes are different than ours. Sometimes they're so much bigger than we could have ever expected. Sometimes they're so much smaller in the natural than we would have expected. Either way, it doesn't matter. You're responsible 
for obedience. You're responsible to be not just a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word. Listen to his voice, do what he says. Listen to his voice, say what he says. We were created in Christ Jesus to do good works. What are those good works? His works, his plan. Not whatever good works that somebody else suggests that we should do or, or great ideas we come up with on our own. We got to get back to doing nothing more, nothing less, nothing else but his plan by his power in his timing. I mean, I'll wrap it up with John 15, 14. Jesus talking. You are my friends if you do what I command you. It's not do what I command you plus all the other things that you feel are good. It doesn't say that. You're, it doesn't say you're my friends if you do most of what I command you, but that really scary things that I ask you, that's okay. You don't have to do those. We tell ourselves that. He'll forgive me for not stepping out this time because that's just a little too uncomfortable. I don't think I can do that. You're my friends if you do what I command you, period. Our life is not our own. We've been bought with a price. Therefore, honor God with our body. It's talking so much more than just uh, sexual things. We're going to honor God with our body by taking the actions that he requires us, he asks us, he propels us to take. We're going to honor him with our body when we don't do the things that he says not to do, that he has no weight for, weight on rather, things that we fill our day with, with good ideas that are not God's plan. That's not doing only what he's commanded us. And if it looks like you're doing less, if it looks like there's a lot less pressure on your life and you're like, man, we're, we're not pushing through anything. We're not like striving to, to force things into existence in any area. This is feels really awkward. This feels weird. I don't think this is right. You might just be stepping into his yoke is easy and his burden is light. You might be stepping into a spirit-empowered life. And it's so much better that way, friends. So is it by works that we're saved, that we earn heaven, that we, we folly up on our, our positions in heaven? It's not by works. But he did create us for works, to be done in his power to accomplish his outcome and his plan. So let me pray with you. God the Father, I thank you that you have loved us so much that you have clearly laid out in your word that the life that you want us to live should only be um, viewed as possible through your power. Help us to take the limits off of you and to trust you enough to do what you want to do through us, to influence who you want to influence through us, to represent you and bring glory to you in all things that we do. Whether we're at home or at church, or at school, or at work, in the car, at the grocery store, wherever we are, God, be glorified through us, not by us just being a little bit nicer than those, but by you doing exceedingly, abundantly, above what anyone else around us would ever expect, think, imagine, dream, like the uh, Amplified says. So we relinquish control to tell you when that's too big or too tough or too scary or too inconvenient. We lay our control down. Have your way in us. 
have your way through us. We choose to trust you to do your works through us. We choose to be obedient and to put action to the things that we believe that you've created us to be, say, and do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks for joining me, friends. It's been so good. I can't wait. We're diving into a brand new series next week. It's going to be really, really good. I'll give you a hint. It has something to do with actions and anointing, but that's all I'm going to tell you. We're going to take these truths. We talked a little bit about the truths that should propel us into action. Now we're going to talk about what those kind of actions should look like, how to know if those actions are God-inspired or you inspired or others inspired or demonically inspired to help you crash and burn. God makes it pretty simple for us if we just take the time to listen. And that's what we're going to talk about. It's going to be so, so good. If you want to support what God is doing through Root, go to give.rootbible.com. We're looking for a hundred new partners, monthly partners, to pro- that God has already set aside for us to be able to uh, accomplish his plans. That's really what it is. There's some things he's speaking to us about that can't be accomplished uh, without you. And so I'm so thankful that you're watching this. I'm so thankful that you're checking in with God to say, is this something you want me to support in prayer, in volunteer hours, in finances? And then just do what he says. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing else like we talked about today. Just simple obedience. That's all we're looking for. I'm not going to tell you the amount that you have to give. I'm not going to say, oh, we need we need 100 people at $1,000 a month. No. It's not that way. I know God and you is big enough to tell you what to do. And I know you're mature enough to put actions to what you believe. So just leave it at that. Go to give.rootbible.com. We're about to launch into uh, September 12th through the 17th. For any of those, any of you that are involved in children's ministry, we, oh, I haven't done any of my overlays. We have a children's ministry it's we call it a collective because we want to see um, not just you but everyone grow i don't even have it i'll do this one we want everyone to grow in your ability to release the holy spirit in your church services there's nothing that is more important than understanding how to equip these kids to live the life God has for them. And if it's not empowered by the Spirit, then we're just teaching them nice, cutesy rules and regulations, same similar things that they would receive if they went to a summer class at the YMCA. Let's just be honest. If we're only teaching, we should niceness and kindness, and we should try to be a little bit better than the unsaved around us, in these things because that glorifies God goes so much more than that just like we were talking about today a life in the spirit is the only whoo that was loud life in the spirit is the only way to live like a Christian so why not set our kids up like that how do you do that join us at the collective it's September 12th through the 17th go to rootkidman.com it's early bird special early bird you have a chance to get a worm I don't have a graphic for that It's a three pound, 26 inch worm, gummy worm, which I just think is so fun. And it's kind of funny. Early bird gets the worm. So anyway, I have a chance to win that if you register before Saturday. And then we are in the middle of a series in Root Bible Academy called Star, How to Be a Star in the Supernatural World. And it's been really, really good. So friends, if you have preschool through senior hires, you got to enroll your whole family one price, whole family. doesn't matter if you have 17 kids or one. As long as it's just your family. Don't be signing up your whole church for that. And that is find, or helping families to grow spiritually between Sundays. So check it out, rootbibleacademy.com. All right. 
Well, that is it for me, friends. Uh, it is Friday, so I will see you again next week with our brand new series. Go hear his voice and do what he says today. Deal? Deal. All right.